right. Um, hello. So, uh, I mentioned this, like, a little while ago, um, that I wanted to recreate this makeup look. That's, like, my go-to glam. It's, like, my go-to glam when I want to, like, look glam, but not like I'm trying too hard. You know what I mean? And it's kind of just been, it's, honestly, it's been my go-to look for dinners and events when I just don't, I don't have the time to think about anything else. And it's evolved, maybe, like, there are different versions of it, but it's pretty much always the same. So I'm gonna show you today. I am filming on a new camera, so hopefully it looks better. Uh, the mic is not new. I'm working on getting a new microphone. So updates, updates. Um, all right, so I am moisturized, wearing sunscreen. My skin's feeling a little bit dry. I'm just going to rehydrate a little bit with the Color Science Hydrating Mist. My base kind of always changes just with like whatever I'm doing at the time, you know? Um, or what I need. So my skin's feeling just like a little bit dry. So I'm gonna go in with this just to do a little bit of rehydrating. I've been really into color science recently because they have a lot of um, makeup with SPF and I've been into SPF if you didn't know. When I was in New York, the only thing that I did to prep my skin for the makeup because it wasn't during the day, it was so I wasn't worried about SPF. It was um, at night, I just used my moisturizer and that was it, because I didn't pack like a ton of makeup and a ton of primers or anything. Now that that has kind of like set in a little bit, I'm gonna go in once again with the Color Science Brightening Primer. This is Broad Spectrum SPF 20. So yeah, I've just been obsessed with lay layering SPF just because it's daytime and I'm probably gonna take those like photos outside. You know what I mean? In the direct sunlight. So it's like bright yellow. Wow, that was probably way too much. But it has kind of um, a smoothing effect. This is definitely way too much. Um, and it's brightening because it's yellow, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna take it down my neck just because I used way too much. What a waste of product, that's annoying. A lot comes out, you don't need a full pump. Now, sorry, I my monitor doesn't work with this camera, so I have to get a new one, so I'm constantly looking at the tiny thing, so if I'm ever out of focus, I apologize. <laughs> if this whole thing is out of focus, I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. All right, um, so I'm going to do a little bit of color correcting underneath my eyes, and I always use my LA Girl concealer. It's like light ivory or something, but it's a very nice peach. I kind of feel like I shouldn't film on Mondays considering all of the yard work that's happening outside right now. So I place this under my eyes just for a little bit of warmth. So because it is a concealer, it adds like a little bit of um, coverage, but I'm mostly using it for the color correcting just to like warm up that area so that my concealer doesn't look, leave like a gray cast once I go over top. And then for my foundation, I'm going to be using uh, Rare Beauty. This is 170W. This has been my favorite foundation for like a while now. And I'm applying that with my Eco Tools. I, don't, I can't remember what this is called. It's like the Eco Sponge or something. Um, it's biodegradable and it's definitely falling up. Like it's ready to biodegrade. So I'm going to have to get rid of it soon, but. So when it comes to like I don't know, coverage for this look. I like to keep my foundation pretty lightweight, you know? I don't like a ton of coverage. I like this to be very comfortable because I'm not trying, because I'm not trying to look like I'm wearing a ton of makeup, but I still want it to be glam. For the areas where I need a little bit more coverage because I do have some like breakouts happening around, I'm gonna use the Dior Forever Concealer. What shade is this? One, 1W? 1W? just to add a little bit more coverage in these areas. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that underneath my eyes. This is going to be basically just coverage. I'm not doing any highlighting yet. And then I'm gonna go in with my, this is my Givenchy sponge, super bougie, but like, actually, you know what? I'm gonna use my um, Eco Tools just to blend out here first. This is kind of like, I think I just said this, but this is kind of like initial coverage, you know, some warmth. Cause I mostly like to conceal underneath my eyes. I'm not necessarily trying to highlight yet. So using something that's like the same color as my skin tone, basically, that's nice and warm, is going to add that nice coverage with without, you know, <laughs> creating any kind of a gray cast. Okay, so for then for highlighting, and I do a tiny bit of this, um, when I want to be like a little bit extra. I'm going to use the Rare Beauty Concealer in 170W. They have corresponding concealers and the concealers are meant to basically be a little bit lighter than the foundation. I'm going to use this to highlight right there. 
I like to do the tops of my cheekbones to give it a little lift, the side of my nose. I was doing this a lot when I was in New York, like this area. Maybe I'll take it down here a little bit, right there on my chin. And then I kind of like to cut my cheekbones with it. So just a little right there. Nothing too crazy. Then I'm gonna use that same G, G, Givenchy. Have you heard people call it Givenchy? It's like hilarious. Anyway, um, I'm gonna use that, blend that out in these areas. So I'm kind of just like building up small amounts of all of this product. Looking what's left over around my mouth, the corner of my mouth, because I tend to get darkness there. So I think what I try to achieve when I'm doing this look is it's like a full face of glam, like full face. Like if you see somebody doing like all their glam, but I'm doing like, I'm trying to think of like an, an example, someone like I love Seta E, like Karen, someone who just like loves like full coverage and glam, you know, who just like goes in. So I'm using all of those like steps and all those tricks, but I'm applying them in smaller amounts. So I'm not saying that this isn't gonna be time consuming because I wanna be, like I don't know how long this is gonna be. I wanna be precise with it. You don't need as much product basically is what I'm saying. Start off with this sponge to blend underneath my cheekbone. And then I'm gonna go back in with my eco tools and just lightly blend over that. And like I said, this is the kind of um, makeup that I would wear to events or to dinner when I just like wanna look fly as fuck, but I'm not trying to go too hard. You know what I mean? It's mostly just about like looking really flawless. So I didn't take any of that. I'm just kind of blending now. I didn't take any of that light concealer underneath my eyes because I don't need it. I don't, I'm not trying to like highlight that area. I'm just trying to conceal that area. I do need a little bit more coverage in other places. Taking a little bit of light sand from um, my Tarte Shape Tape just cause it has like a good amount of coverage and I just need a little more in some areas. And then I'm just gonna take a little fluffy blending brush and dab around those. I'm keeping the coverage on the breakout and then I'm gonna wipe off my brush and kind of buff around the edges. That way I'm keeping like the coverage exactly where I need it and just kind of like trying to blend it into the rest of the makeup, which is just gonna make it look like less noticeable. Um, okay, I'm gonna use the Ash Brown The Edge brow pencil from House Labs just to sketch my brows out a little bit. This isn't like so necessary. I just like a slightly more structured brow when I'm doing some kind of glam. So I usually go in with a pencil and just kind of like sketch out the shape, at least on the bottom. And then if you've, if you've watched my other videos, then you know we come back to the brows later on. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna clean up a little bit underneath with uh, some concealer. I'm actually gonna take, uh, just kidding, I'm gonna take a little bit of my foundation on a flat brush and just clean up underneath my brows just to kind of like perfect the shape. Depends on like how glam I'm trying to get, you know what I mean? All right, before I go in with any um, powders or anything, I'm gonna prime my lids with my Anastasia eye primer. And then this part is like really, really basic. If you, you know, have watched a bunch of my videos. I'm gonna set my under eyes with my LC Cosmetics setting powder in light medium, translucent powder. And I'm just gonna use a very small amount. Um, so I'm really just using this to, you know, keep my concealer in place. And I'm gonna be applying that with my Sigma Soft Blend number 40 brush. It's like a highlighting or a powder brush, I don't know. Um, and I like to take a tiny bit of that like in the inner corner just because this area can get kind of dark and this is a nice like brightening setting powder. Um, it also prevents like eyeshadow from just getting all up in there, you know? And then I'm taking that same powder in the other areas that I applied concealer just so that I can maintain that brighten effect. Brighten effect, what? So just in the chin, like a little bit here, just like in the areas where I wanna keep the bright, the bright, like what are you talking about? The brighten effect, <laughs> the brightening. I don't wanna to apply too much. And then for the rest of my face to set it, I'm gonna be using the Ilia Magic Sands setting powder. This is the Radiant Translucent Powder. This is also SPF 20. So again, layering SPF. And this is actually just like a very nice kind of like pale vanilla shade. So it's perfect for my skin tone. I'm applying that with my Wayne Goss. I can never remember what this is called. 
but I'm assuming it's a powder brush. I used to use it for highlighter, but I started using it for powder and it's pretty fabulous. So I always just kind of like put the powder in the cap and then rub it around and then tap it off. And then I'll just kind of um, really lightly blend this over the skin. Sometimes I pat, sometimes I buff. Depends on how I'm feeling, you know what I mean? And I'm using just like a very small amount because I just want to set what's there before I go in with powder. I'm not trying to like mattify my skin or anything. Um, okay, I'm gonna use the Wayne Goss. You guys loved, speaking of Wayne Goss, you guys loved the way um, the Radiance Boosting Face Palette in light gold looked on my skin. So I've been trying to just like use it more because I did actually bring it to New York and I fell in love with this contour color. And I guess I'm still kind of on the fence about the highlight. I mean, sorry, not the highlight, the bronze, but I don't know, I feel like I got so many nice comments about it when I used it. So it's been what I've been using. So to bronze, I'm actually gonna use this, I can't remember if it's Japanesque or NARS or who, there's like a few different companies that have that make these brushes, but and I, I genuinely don't remember where this came from. It doesn't matter. This is when we use bronze. I used to use it bronze all the time. So I'm gonna dip into the Wayne Goss, just like lightly buff this the outer perimeter of my face to add some warmth and glow because it does have a little bit of a pearl in it, which is nice. I was watching a Hung Van Gogh um, video where, was he doing Miranda Kerr's makeup? I can't remember, but he was um, using a brush and he was patting the bronzer and I felt so justifi justified <laughs> with my like patting technique. So kind of hugging the cheekbone onto the cheek a little bit, just adding warmth to the face, onto my jawline and down my neck, just to like keep things cohesive. Um, I've been liking doing my bronzer before contour recently so that it, I, I feel like it kind of prevents me from going too hard with the contour. So now I'm using the Morphe M R31 brush to contour. I'm gonna use that Wayne Goss palette. I'm gonna dip in and I'm gonna do my jawline because I would say it takes about three weeks to a month to work off all the pasta that you eat when you go to New York. <laughs> that is not an exaggeration. Blending that into the grooves of my neck. And then I'm just tapping like this, tapping it off and then very lightly, I'm gonna go into the little like in, in, impre impression, depression, this little spot right here under my cheekbone. And I'm just gonna very, very lightly create a little bit of a shadow, just to kind of chisel that cheekbone out a little bit. I already did a little bit of defining with the bronzer, so I don't need a lot. And then for my to contour my nose, I'm using the Sigma Small Tapered Blending Brush. This is the E45, so I can zoom you in for this now. So I'm just swirling into that product and then tapping it off. And then I'm going to focus it underneath And I'm gonna slowly bring it up to refine the tip and then kind of just like fade it out as I go up. And if you have trouble with this, you can kind of like turn to see like where it comes out the most. And this is a really nice brush for this because it's super soft and like blendable. Blendable? What? It's super soft <laughs> and it's good for blending, but it's also comes to like a tip. So it makes like navigating a bumpy nose easier. So I want the majority of the definition to be at the tip because I like to refine that the most. Then I'm going to wipe off my brush and just go in and kind of blend. I'm gonna do a similar thing around my lips. I can insert my um, lip contour video. If you're like, what? This doesn't make any sense. Basically I make a little lip mustache kind of fucked up because usually I do my blush before I apply any powder, but I forgot. So I'm hoping that we don't fuck it up. I'm going to use, uh, what's easy to use? I'm gonna use this blush from Dominique Cosmetics. This is the cream blush in the shade Warm Peach. Just like kind of fabulous, you know? And I'm going to apply that with my sponge. Usually I would go in with my fingers or I would use a sponge or a brush, but I usually do this before I set with any powders, but I'm definitely using a sponge now. So I'm really hoping that I don't like pick up too much. 
And what I'm going to do to make sure that I don't like totally fuck it up is tap it off on the back of my hand first when there's like a nice amount, like a nice sheer amount of product coming off. So I think this will be okay. Start up here and then slowly blend it out. So focusing it up higher on my cheekbone, just because that's what's nice and flattering for my uh, face shape. I haven't tried this. I've tried this formula, but I haven't, um, obviously, if you guys watched that other video, but I haven't tried the uh, this color yet. It's beautiful. It kind of melts into my bronzer really nicely. And actually, that's really nice about like these kinds of um, peachy colors or th colors that have like a lot more warmth. Something that I was doing when I was in New York is I was taking a little bit like up onto my temples as well. Just to kind of like, I don't know, just seems nice. A little bit of the end of the chin. Fuck it, why not, you know what I mean? I've already primed my lids. So since my, this is, see this is usually how I do it. I do my base first because if my blush tends to be a little bit more or leans a little bit more cool, then I'll go for like a little bit more cool toned eye. Um, it's usually something like a nice taupey, shade you know in my crease and then i'll use something like kind of a cool toned taupe shimmer on the lid or maybe i'll go a little bit more bronze and i'll kind of like amp up the warmth or tone it down a little bit depending on like how my face looks so since i went for this like really beautiful warm peach i want to use something that's gonna be a little bit a little bit more warm palette that i'm going to be using is the one that i used in new york this is the uh, ritzy eyeshadow palette just a little guy easy for travel that's why i packed it um and just really beautiful colors. So I'm gonna start off with Nectar as my transition shade. I'm gonna be using my Wayne Goss number 16 brush. This is a big fluffy brush. So I'm just gonna tap into that. And then I'm gonna use this to just begin defining, but it's really just kind of like to warm up. I'm not even really defining at this point. I'm just kind of like creating some kind of a base color because I know that I like to push this area back. It's kind of just like adding my mid-tones. And look at how freaking gorgeous that color is with the blush, like perfect match. The further you take it in, the closer it can make your eyes look. So you wanna be a little bit careful, but if you keep it up a little bit high, it kind of creates this really like kind of editorial, like sultry look. That's especially fabulous for a fancy New York dinner, which is what I wore it to. Brush makes, um, I mean, Sigma eyeshadows are beautiful, but this brush makes blending eyeshadows impossibly easy. <laughs> it's like insane, but they are very expensive compared to like if you're used to Morphe brushes. So I kind of just like to deepen up this whole area because I like to push it back in space, which just opens up my eyes a little bit more. And I always love to just kind of um, blend it out like that. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little, uh, I don't know what this is. This little guy? <laughs> I'm gonna pick up that same color, run that underneath my eye bag. So just this whole area, pushing this back in space. The go-to technique, you know what I mean? I'm gonna blend that like just under my crease. Like that crease, that natural crease that I have right there. Um, I can shoot in 4K with this camera, so if you guys want me to do that, I'm just a little worried that the file size is going to be like so overwhelming for, for my um, little laptop, but I'll give it a shot if you want. We can like really see the detail. I don't know if it's going to be like that big a difference. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I haven't done it yet. Okay, now I'm going to grab the Morphe M433 brush, and I'm going to go in with a slightly darker color. This is Enrich, this guy. It would be really nice if I could have a monitor right now. So I'm just using a slightly smaller brush, picking it up on the tip of that, and then using that to really define the crease. So really just kind of like pushing it around my eyeball. Focusing it on the outer part of the crease, blending it inward, and then slowly blending it up and out kind of into that same shape as the first color. This eye always gets like more smoky. I don't know how that happens. It never fails. Once again, I'm gonna grab um, that little Morphe brush, the small one, and grab that same color. 
and I'm going to run that on the outer part of my lower lash line, taking it about halfway, connecting it up. Um, and what's nice about this look is you can kind of keep it like this, or you can go in with smaller brushes and then go into nocturnal, go into like a darker brown and just keep building it up. So it depends on like how smoky you wanna make it. I think I'm gonna build up and rich just a little bit more in the crease. I wanna find that nice like sweet spot. And then I'm actually gonna go back in with the first color, Nectar, on that first brush and buff over the top just a little bit up to I really love fading my eyeshadow especially when it's like a smokier eye up into my brow okay and then for my lid um, I'm kind of torn because I said I wanted to go for warmer this is the color that I wore in New York gold rush which is just this really beautiful kind of like neutrally um, I don't even know how to describe it it's not a gold um, it's, in, it's like a, almost a pewter. It's like a warm pewter. I don't, I don't know. Um, but Nectar is, wait, Nectar? No, Midas, sorry, is really beautiful. And it's also warmer. So this is really nice too. So basically I would go in with some kind of a bronzy gold taupe shimmer all over the lid. That's like the next step. And then I also have this other um, Sigma palette Ivy because I wasn't entirely sure like what color I wanted. Um, and I really like this as well. So maybe we'll do that. Let's go in with, um, let's go in with this. So this is um, Starlight. And I'm just gonna pick it up on my finger. Let's make it smokier this time. I'm gonna pack this all over the lid with my finger, taking it all the way into the inner corner. I'm only gonna go in with one pass of this. And then as I get up to the crease, I'm just gonna kind of like diffuse into the crease. So tapping lightly, colors blend very nicely. And if you feel like you get fallout when you do this, try like this kind of motion where you're kind of like patting and pulling. That helps to like put more pigment down. It'll help prevent fallout and it'll also kind of like amp up the uh, formula a little bit. And then right in the center of the lid, I'm gonna go in with Midas just to lighten it up and also add a little bit more warmth. So I'm just patting this right in the center of the lid and then just kind of like diffusing. Using a clean finger to blend. around the edges. So it just adds like a little bit of uh, like a pop of warmth and some dimension. Okay, and then uh, since we're going smokier, I'm gonna use something probably smokier in my waterline. When I was in New York, I used something that was like, um, what color was it? I think it was by 1999, if you guys know that brand. But it was like a shimmery nude, basically. And it just kind of like was very pretty and it just kind of opened up the eyes. What the fuck is it? I'll link it somewhere because I, for whatever reason, I can't find it. But for today, I'm going to use the uh, Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Color Pencil in 10 Sienna. Just because we're going with warmth and I want something a little, it's like kind of metallic. So I'm going to place this in my waterline. Um, okay, I like to do my highlighter and mess, uh, and and brows and all that kind of stuff before I do mascara just so that I don't get like fallout because I'm not gonna be wearing falsies. So to highlight what I used in New York and what I'm gonna use today is the Vesca Moonlight Stargaze Luminous Glow Highlighter, mostly because it's tiny and it's just like really easy to travel with, but it's also like this really beautiful, like just nude kind of vanilla, like pale gold, you know? I'm applying that with my Morphe M510 brush. And this is like the one time when I really want to load up on the highlighter because I just want a glow. So I'm going to go over the tops of the cheekbones, bring it up to this like C shape, um, focus it up top, and then just kind of buff it around. This is one of the most beautiful highlighters because it, it gives you that, that really beautiful sheen, but it doesn't look like very heavy, but it catches the light so nicely. It also builds nicely without um, looking like too much, you know, or leaving any kind of a cast. I'm gonna put a tiny bit on the tip of my chin. Sometimes I go a little bit above my brows. And then I'm to do my inner corner, 
and also the tip of my nose and also my brow bone, I think. Um, I'm going to use this Yano series by the Beautylish. This is brush number 10 and um, it's kind of similar to that Sigma brush. It's got like a nice point, but it's super soft on the end. So it's really good for this. So I'm going to load up that brush, buff it into the inner corner and I'm going to highlight this whole inner corner, like basically against my nose, taking it down around, blending a little bit onto the lid, but just really opening up this area. Like I really want the glow in there. You see the difference between that and that? It's like crazy. Just kind of buff, using a buffing motion. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of that and I'm just gonna buff it like right on the tip of my nose. And then I'm actually gonna, I don't never do this anymore, but I'm gonna take it down center as well. And then buff here. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna do my Cupid's bow too. Like a late night fancy dinner, like that's when I want to go in. All right, and then I guess for my brow bone, I'll use a different brush. I guess I'm just gonna use this guy. This is a Morphe brush. I don't know what it is, but it's just like a little tiny flat brush. Use that same highlighter to do my brow bone. And then just kind of lightly flick it out to my cheekbone highlight. Um, okay, I'm gonna set my brows using my, what's it called? Uh, Dr. Bronner's, holy shit, I forgot what it was called. Dr. Bronner's soap. And I'm just gonna be using my little Sigma spoolie. I have brow tutorials everywhere. I can insert one right here because I know people are always asking me for them. And thank you so much. I love my brows as well, it's such a compliment. But basically I set them with soap because it's just the best. Did that initial fill and now I'm just setting the hairs where I want them. Now I can really see the areas that are like a little bit more sparse and need more filling, which is like for me basically the whole tail. So I'm just gonna get these in place and let them set before I go in with a brow pen, which is the secret weapon. Curling my lashes is key because I have very straight lashes and I also always use a waterproof mascara because for these kinds of looks, when I wanna be like glam, but I don't wanna be like too much, I don't wear falsies. I just use my natural lashes. So curling them is gonna be really important. I'm going to use the Clio Kill Lash Superproof uh, Mascara, which is a Korean brand. They're available on Amazon and I'll link them. But I also really love the Monsieur Big Waterproof from Lancome. And if you're looking for a drugstore option, the CoverGirl Lash Blast Waterproof, the best, fucking bomb. You wanna be gentle with your lashes. So I kind of like do some pulsing and then I'll just like slowly pull it up the lash. Now you can obviously wear lashes with this look and I would recommend something like natural. Um, I can link some of my faves down below. I mean, you can wear any lash obviously, but like what I would wear if I was gonna wear lashes with this, um, I can link those down below. It would be like an Ardell Demi Wispy Foam Ink or whatever. Ugh! Okay. <laughs> So now I'm gonna go in with my um, mascara. And I love this stuff because it is probably the most waterproof mascara I've ever used. It also has an incredibly um, precise wand. Am I getting shit all over my lid? I'm getting shit all over my lid. It's so annoying. Um, and it just combs them out really nicely. Oh my fucking Christ. I'm gonna kill somebody. Probably gonna take that out on my boyfriend. Okay, well, just let that dry and then we'll figure it out. I don't know, we might have a meltdown. It's, whew, it's completely fine. Okay, Q-tip time. Wish me luck. Fuck, because it's so waterproof. Oh man, you guys, this is not good. Going back in with my um, sponge I used to highlight and just like buffing. <laughs> Back in with my blush sponge. I feel like we're getting somewhere. Back in with my highlight. Okay, I feel like that's fine. We can pretend that nothing ever happened. I don't have to kill anybody. Okay, I just did my lower lashes with the Buxom Extrovert. Wait, Extrovert? Yeah, Extrovert mascara. Batteries are done charging, which is just my favorite for my lower lashes. I, I don't know why, I talk about it a million times. Uh, I talk about it a million times, what? It's bomb. And then a trick that I have to make your upper lashes look even more like 
amazing, is to layer like a volumizing mascara on top. I'm actually going to use this guy over the Clio mascara. And this just adds volume while the Clio mascara kind of adds like volume, just thickness, you know? While the Clio mascara will hold the curl. But I'm not trying to go in with too much because if you make it too wet, it can um, manipulate the formula of the mascara that's underneath and make it like make your lashes fall down. So just be careful. All right, to finish off my brows, I'm gonna use my NYX Lift and Snatch uh, Brow Tint Pen, not in blonde. Why am I holding blonde? Gray Black is the shade that I like to use. And I'm basically just going to fill in the sparse areas. This is such a nice brow pen. If you guys are like, oh my God, her brows are amazing. This guy, it's so precise. Like look at how thin that the bristles are. And they have a really nice shade range. You can really draw like individual hairs. So I'm gonna basically like build up the ends because so I like the tail to be the most defined. And then just kind of slowly bring it in a little bit. I wanna make sure things are cohesive, but this is the fullest part of my brow, like the darkest naturally. Um, okay, and then all that's left is lips. So I don't know if you guys saw my recent lip tutorial, um, but that's basically the lip that I did for dinner and that's what I'm gonna do today. So I might go through it a little bit quick. Uh, I'm gonna go in with, where is it? Endless Cacao from Makeup Forever to do a little bit of contouring. And then there are all kinds of um, lip liners that I love and I can list all of them. It kind of depends on like what I'm going for. I've really been loving the Vive, um, is it Velvet Sands? If you guys don't know Jamie Genevieve, she launched her own brand called Vive, and it's just a really beautiful, like warm nude. This is what I brought to New York. I'm gonna basically like finish lining and just kind of like finish drawing out the shape and blend into that contour. All right, and then I'm gonna go in with the NYX uh, lingerie liquid lip, uh, is it a liquid lipstick? I can't remember what this is called. Yeah, li matte liquid lipstick in the shade Turn On. So I'm gonna place this in the center of my lips and just pat it out. So a really small amount, pat it into that liner. This has just been my like favorite lip look recently. Um, okay, and then just to add a little bit more dimension, I'm gonna go in with Melt Cosmetics Zaddy, <laughs> which is just like this very pale peachy color peachy nude. I'm gonna dot that right in the center just to add a little bit of a pout. And that is perfect for dinner because it's like matte and very lightweight and comfortable and it like wears nicely. Cause like, let's face it, if you're eating, which like I ate a bunch of pasta and stuff that night, some stuff's gonna come off, you know what I mean? but not to the point where it looks horrible. You know what I mean? Like it's gonna look very natural and it kind of just like blends into your um, natural lips or at least this color combination blends into my natural lip color really nicely. So this is the close up of the finished makeup. What do we think? Oh, I got a little stray up here. What's happening? This is my go-to for events, dinner, when I wanna look glam, but not like too much, you know what I mean? And you can really do up the eyes or play with the waterline, um, which I kind of did today, like added something that had like a little bit more red in it, which really makes my eyes pop. Here it is, zoomed out. I love it, it's my favorite. Like I said, I mean, I took you through all of the steps. You can really like adjust it depending on what you're going for, but it's just my absolute go-to. Uh, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So obviously if you're going to just like some kind of an event, you can switch up the, I mean, this makeup looks beautiful with any lip. You could wear like a bright red lip. You could do like a really, really dark lip. It's just like absolutely my favorite. I love it. And I wanted to share it with you guys. So those are the products that I have been using regularly, but I feel like there, there are a lot of drugstore products that would achieve the same look in my opinion. And maybe um, I can do drugstore like alternatives underneath the products that I use, you know what I mean? Because I could definitely create this look with like a ton of drugstore products, so. Or I could just do this tutorial again. You just let me know. I don't really like repeating things, but anyway, now I'm rambling. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed. That's it. <laughs> Let me know what makeup looks you want to see next. Isn't my earrings so dope? I kind of love just wearing one. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'm going to go and make my boyfriend make me something to eat. Holy shit, my nails look... That My hands are so dry. I look like 800 years old. <sighs> On that note. Bye.